The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Hello, I'm Bill Winston, and welcome to another program. The program that you're watching is called The Believer's Walk of Faith, where we walk by faith and not by sight. We have another exciting teaching for you today. We're teaching on the law of confession. Praise God. Now, we call confession, we're not talking about confessing sin or something negative. We're talking about the word in the Greek homologia, which means to say the same thing, to say what God says about us, despite our circumstances, just to say what God says, confess. Now, this particular teaching is called speak the word only. Now, here's one thing I want you to remember. There is nothing in this world so great or so powerful that cannot be turned around with a tongue. Now, you're going to understand that later. Praise God. Get your Bibles and pencils and papers ready. Let's take some good notes now. Let's go into it. It's called Speak the Word Only. Come on over to Matthew's Gospel, please. And Matthew chapter 9. Matthew's Gospel chapter 9. I told you, I'm going to walk you through like a Philadelphia lawyer. We, we in the courtroom here. We have in court right now. All right, let me know when you get to Matthew chapter 9. Now, you got to be taught this because this is one of the main teachings of the church. Why not been taught? Why? And that's why the enemy has been taking advantage of the church. Hey, we haven't known this. We haven't walked in this. Because you can't walk in something you ain't never heard. There's a truth here. You can't slip up on this. You got to get this on purpose. <laughs> All right, let's look and see what it said in verse 27. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him. Now they followed him all in the house. And Jesus said to them, Believe you that I'm able to do this? Do you believe that I'm able to do this? Do you believe? That I'm able to do this. Yes. Who you believe? <laughs> now, notice what he didn't say. Do you believe that you're able to do this? You don't do it. You don't do it. Do you believe that God is able to do it? See? And you gotta, you gotta be there. That's where you gotta be. You gotta come to the place where you believe that God is able to do this. Amen. Now I'm talking about for you. Now I'm not talking about for your cousin. Amen. I'm talking about for you. Amen. Are y'all still with me? Yes. How, are we flowing? Yes. All right, look at, Mar say flow. flow. Look at Mark chapter nine. Now this is when uh, the disciples couldn't cast a demon out of this boy and they brought him to Jesus and then so forth and Jesus then in ended up casting him out. But look what Jesus said here. Verse 29, oh, I'm sorry, verse 23. And Jesus said unto him, if thou can, what? Believe. All things are possible, keep going, to him that believe. Now, how many things are possible to him that believe? All right. Is he talking about secular believing or Bible believing? All right. So, all things are possible to him that can believe. What's possible for Bill Winston is solely based on my capacity to believe. 
Say amen to that. Amen. Now, now, now I'm not, I'm not, I'm just using this illustration now. It may not be possible for you, but it's possible for me because I believe. Now, because you don't believe, and I believe for a corporate jet, don't get jealous at me because I believe. You, you got what I'm saying? See, don't come down on me. It's an individual thing. It's an individual thing. If you believe for a Bentley, you believe for a Rolls Royce, you believe for a seven bedroom home, you believe, then don't nobody else get mad at sister cause she believes this is what she believes. How we doing? Say flow. All right, so. Let's go back over to Matthew's gospel again. So, if I can believe it, it becomes possible for me. Say, if I can believe. If I can believe. Now, believing is not all. You got to believe and act on the word. See, and in this case, we have to believe and speak. Because what we said over in Mark's gospel, chapter 11, verse 23, whosoever shall say to this mountain, impossible situation, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, not head, you can't believe with your head, you believe with your heart, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things that he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. That's a law. Verse 27. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men came and followed him, crying, saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, he, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe I'm able to do this? What did he say? What did they say? Yes, yes Lord. And then he touched their eyes and said, according to your what? Faith. Faith be it unto you. And their eyes were what? Open. And Jesus straightway charged them and said, see that now no man knoweth. But they went and blabbed it everywhere. I'm just putting my own words in it. They told everybody. Now, what am I saying? You're believing. It's key to you getting the promises of God because God has already said yes and amen to every promise. No promise of God did God say no. No promise of God did he say maybe so. Every promise of God, he's already said yes. Just as quick as you can get that corporate jet, that's as quick as he'll get it to you. That's as quick as you'll believe. All right, let's look at this James chapter three, please. Look at verse two. In many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able to bridle the whole body. Now what he's saying there, he's saying if you can control your tongue, you can control your body and your circumstances. Look at verse three. Behold, we put bits in horses' mouths and that they may obey us and we turn about the whole body. All right, let's look and see what that does. I got, look at me. Here's a horse and you put a bit in the horse's mouth. Okay, now when you pull the reins, pull it to the right, that horse's mouth, his, his, his head goes up and sometimes you pull it hard, you feel his tongue, you see his tongue kind of come out. What are you doing? Put pressure on the tongue. Okay? And he is saying, if you want to turn your circumstances, you're going to have to put pressure on your tongue. Okay, now wh why is he saying put pressure on it? Because your flesh is not going to want to cooperate. Your flesh is going to tell you, you're talking contrary. Now you, you're not making sense. You, why are you saying that? And this is the way it is right here. Don't you tell it like it is. No, you're going to tell it like it is. But you're going to tell it like you want it to be is. You know what I mean? Well, how you want it to be. All right. Now look at the next part. Verse four, behold, also the ships, which though they be so great are driven with fierce winds, yet they turn about uh, with a very, uh, yet are turned about, are they turned about with a very small helm, whether so ever the governor listens. All right, let's explain that again. 
So here you got a ship and this ship is going in this direction. Let's say it's going north or whatever, or south in this case. All right, the ship is going in this direction. Now, I've got a very small helm in the back. Say helm. Helm is like a rudder, all right? This big ship has a rudder in the back. So now I want to turn the ship. So I got to turn the rudder. But I don't turn the rudder by getting outside, getting in the water and try to turn it. I've got a wheel up there in the captain's deck that I can turn. And when I turn the wheel, it turns the rudder. And so the rudder turns. Now, when the ship is going this way and the rudder is in line, everything's straight. But if I want to turn, change my direction and I want to go to the right, to the left, to the left, I then turn it and this rudder will turn. Now the water is still coming in at that rudder and at first I'm plowing water. But if I leave the rudder in, then the water is going to cause that pressure to pull the back of that boat, push it on around, and the front of that boat changes direction. So I want to put pressure on my tongue because at first when I say by his stripes I'm healed, I'm just plowing water. When at first when I say I have abundance and no lack, I'm just plowing water. At first I say I got a marriage made in heaven, I'm just plowing water. At first when I say, hey, I got the victory in this situation, I'm just plowing water. But if I leave it in and hold fast to the confession of my faith, pretty soon God will, this boat will start turning on around and my situation will start changing and everybody on board won't be thrown off. Lord have mercy, that's a whole nother teaching right there. See, everything will be done decently, come on, and in order. Now, what is the helm? The, the helm is the rudder. Then you've got the governor. The governor is the heart. It's a, it's a thing that controls the rudder. You, you follow what I'm saying? All right. Now, let's look at the next verse. Glory to God. The next verse is verse five. So is a tongue as a little member and boasts that's great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Now, what do I mean? When I was young, my brother, my sister and I, my parents would take us down to the country in Georgia in a farm to my grandfather and grandmother's house. Now, I, I said take us down there, they deposited us down there. <laughs> and, uh, and so sometime it would be around Christmas time, but I remember it was cool. So granddad would get up early in the morning and he would light the stove, they had a big, pot belly stove and the fireplace. And what he would do is he would get some kindling. Now kindling is wood, but usually it's wood that's got some sap on it. Now I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about this is a, this is, this is, this, this is, this is a syrupy kind of substance, but it's easily ignitable. It's easily ignitable. So what would happen is, is he would light this kindling. And once he would light this kindling, he would take it, put it in the stove or put it in the fireplace and then put other large pieces of wood over it. And so once he did that, then the kindling would catch the large pieces of wood and I'd have a big fire. Everybody get warm. Now, what this is saying is that your tongue is the kindling. And what happens is, how, behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. In other words, whatever the raging fire is in our lives, words are what started it even if you don't know how. Now you got to see this because what happens to the kindling when the fire starts, when it starts raging? Where, can you find the kindling? No, you can't find the kindling. You can't find the source of that thing.
thing because the source is so small in comparison to the raging destruction that this thing is causing. Well, you know, it just passes in my family, Pastor. Well, I got news for you. Those things can't pass. They can't do it without words. Words is what started everything. Nothing yet, it doesn't just happen. Words are behind any kind of destruction that you see. But here's the good news. We can put the rudder in. We can know that, hey, wait a second. I know if words started this, words can stop it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the word of God in my life. And when I say it, God's going to do it. There is nothing in this earth so great or powerful that it cannot be turned around with your tongue. Lord Jesus. Are y'all with me? Now, I, I, let, let's just go down here uh, because of time. Let's go down here to verse 12. Lord Jesus. No, verse 11. Have you got it? Does a fountain send forth the same place sweet and, and water and bitter? In other words, does the same spigot bring forth both? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either of vine, figs, no. So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. If both waters come out, it's going to be all be salty. Who is a wise man endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter and envious and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the what? Truth. All right. Look what it says in Proverbs 18. If you haven't said praise the Lord. Verse 8, the words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the what? Belly. Now, what is that saying? That words are more than sound. They are spirit, and they can go all the way down into your spirit. If somebody speaks a, a hateful Anger, uh, word that is 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 condemning or whatever have you. So if allowed, that word can go down into people's spirits, and that hateful word, that word, people will remember that word, and that word will be playing inside of them sometimes for years. I mean, people who are rehearsing some of these things. I mean, these things happen to them. For, for decades, and they can still hear that word and it affects their lives. Telling the child, you're not gonna ever be nothing, you're gonna be just like your daddy. Now that is not in the Bible, that is something that is not edifying and should never come out of our mouth. I don't care how the boy is acting. I told you when he saw darkness, he called it light. Say amen to this. So now when we're doing this, we wanna make sure that we are not watching television where they would have TV shows set up to rehearse how people were mistreated. Come on now. Don't, don't get quiet on me now. I, I'm saying this, that you, people talk about uh, what happened to them. And you know, I was abused at 12. Well, how old are you now? Well, I, I'm, I'm 70 years old now. Well, well, ain't you got over that yet? No, 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 no. The reason why is because it went down into their spirit. But see, that's one reason why you got to be born again. Because the only thing powerful enough to get it out is the blood of Jesus and the word of God. It can purge your conscience of dead works. You were, you were abused, you were sexually molested. Whatever the case may be, it makes no difference. It was words and words came and people rehearsed it. Now, what do they think? They said, well, if I get it, I talk about it, I can talk it out. Uh-uh, no, no. When you talk about it, you're reinforcing it. You're putting it in here. Why? Because of Proverbs chapter 14. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end of that way is destruction. I'm telling you what we need to do is we need to understand that Jesus said this, you shall know the truth, come on, and the truth will make you free. I'm 
here to tell you right now that what God is saying is I'm going to give you a way that every tree in you that the heavenly father has not planted shall be. You come back next time, we're going to talk about rooting up old trees. We're going to talk about everything that people have been molested, you've been talked about, you've been hated, you've been brought down. I got good news for you. Whoever the sun sets free is free indeed. Well, praise the Lord. I trust that you enjoyed that. Now that's called Speak the Word Only. That's from our teaching series called The Law of Confession. Now, Mark 9, 23 says, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Now, we know that believing is good and we must believe, but believing is not enough. You must believe and speak that word. You see, Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things that he says shall come to pass, he'll have whatsoever he says. Praise God. God has made it so that you, could, I, you and I can believe and speak to mountains, and they'll be removed. Glory to God. Powerful teaching. The address and phone number on your screen, I want you to write us right away. Call us. Do something. you got to get this into your heart and into your house. Praise the Lord. You see, a lot of times our problems have come not because of what we believe, but because what we've spoken. You see, many things that we've spoken out of our mouths have not been in line with God's Word. And because of it, we've had the enemy acting on it rather than God acting on it. So what we're doing now is we're bringing you back to speaking the Word only. And watch your life accelerate. I'm telling you, we've had people's lives that have taken off. They're coming into their destinies like never before. Why? only by changing their speech. That address and phone number on your screen, you write us, we'll send it out to you right away. Why? We want you to get your mouth in line with the Word of God. Well, this is Bill Winston saying, that's all we have for this time. We'll see you next time. Until then, keep walking by faith. Now remember, you need faith to get to your destiny. So don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our videos. This is Bill Winston. I love you.